Last time on Paul Goes Flying. We flew to Pit Meadows. This time on Paul Goes Flying. We fly back and two of my three cameras die. So we're here at uh, Pit Meadows. We're just getting some fuel before we head back. We burn more than we thought we were going to burn. I should have all my instrument time by the time we're done this flight. And um, yeah, Pit Meadows is actually a really cool spot. This is a really cool spot. We stopped at a little restaurant here as well. A little cafe kind of thing. It's super cool. It's kind of a cool spot, cool vibe. So hopefully one of you all gets to come back. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go now. And we're going to uh, not chuckle at that plane call sign. And uh, yeah, here we go. Pit Tower, Golf Victor, Oscar Tango on Alpha Holding Short of 26 left, ready to go. Victor, Oscar Tango, tower left, downwind departure to the east, clear for takeoff, ready, 26 left. Left, downwind departure, clear for takeoff, Victor, Oscar Tango. Alright, lights, camera, action. Lights are on, that on alt, and time up, 1517. Alright, looking good, get one more check to the right here once we kind of scoot around here. Bird, but no planes. Bird, but no planes, I like that. Okay, airspeed's alive, gauges in the green, let's go. Let's get that nose up just a little bit. Victor Oscar Tango, before you go, traffic at your 11 o'clock, 4 miles, is a westbound Cessna, 1,600 feet. We'll be descending for the airport, though, no conflict. The Savannah system terminate change on route 6 What's was the last one you said? Victor Oscar Tango, have a good day, thank you. He just said change on route frequency, so there's a plane just over there, so let's switch to our next frequency, because they'll keep an eye out for us. Over Hazek, Mission Bridge, heading westbound towards Pit Meadow. You got him. Are coming on 9.30, uh, about 500 feet below, a quarter mile, or a mile or so. Just below. Oh, yeah, got him. Yeah, good. Okay, next frequency, one, two, two, seven, seven, five. Good, man. If you ever want to fly here, you're good to go. But Wait. you might feel like you're not. You're on top of it. Just don't let the plane, flying the plane, get behind you, right? Right. Alright, so why don't we make a radio call? Where are we? Over Fort Langley Airport, 2,200 feet. That's Albion as well. Albion, Passing okay. Albion over the, the Fraser River, eastbound for Camelot. Okay. And this is... It's Glen Valley. Glen Valley. Glen Valley traffic, Cessna 172, Golf Victor, Oscar Tango over Albion, 2200 feet eastbound for Kamloops. Glen Valley traffic, Cessna 172, Golf Victor, Oscar Tango. Did you say altitude? Yep. Okay, good. I think I did. I, oh. I thought so. Oh, it's an air lift 63 east of the southwest of the field. Got the traffic coming down. Oh, right, it shares with a, uh, an airport in the States. <laughs> I wonder if we could get above all this. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look that high, but at the same time, they are cumulus clouds. Where is that? How are we doing? All right. Uh... Oh, yeah, I got it. Glen Valley traffic, Crescent 172, Gulf Victor, Oscar Tango coming up on Crescent Island, 2300 eastbound for Kamloops along the Fraser Valley. Glen Valley traffic, Gulf Victor, Oscar Tango. Give Ty a pirate. He yeah. was giving us up the whole time we were coming down. Oh, yeah? It's like, it looks terrible. It looks good. It looks terrible. <laughs> it's good. You'll be able to squeeze through here. Alright. Clouds seem to be rising a little bit. Why don't we try scooting that way and seeing if we can do 25? Alright. Just avoiding the little bit of terrain. Yeah, looks good. Let's do 25. Roger. Traffic, 11 o'clock. Approaching yeah. return right, turn right, turn right. Glen Valley traffic, Cessna 172, Gulf Victor, Oscar Tango. We are just over Wanuck. We are eastbound 2200, Fort Kamloops. Glen Valley traffic, Gulf Victor, Oscar Tango. So, have you learned something with the past two airplanes? Yeah. Um, One, they don't call. Two, they don't look. Yeah. This is looking a little better. I say that cleared up quick. Yeah. Can we call Glen Valley one more time before? Yeah, we why don't we? Let's say we're passing. Uh, 
Wind Valley traffic, Cessna 172, Golf Big Rock, Tango, eastbound over the Mission Bridge, 2,500 feet uh, eastbound of the Valley for Camp Loops. Wind Valley traffic, Cessna 172, Golf Victor, Oscar Tango. That's right. Good. Ah, I got a plane over the water. No factor, low, following oh, same direction. What are we thinking for the route here? You want to climb? Do you think it's worth climbing? What are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, I'll know once we get around this next corner, like once we get past this, because we've got the mountain right here, and the mountain beyond, and the far mountain. And I can't tell what's going on with the clouds beyond the far mountain. That's fair. Okay. So, I would kind of say climb, but the way it's looking, hard to know. All right, why don't we make a call? We're passing uh, Chilliwack Mountain. We're going to be climbing 4,500. Okay. Uh, two mass traffic, Cessna 172, Golf Victor, Oscar Tango, just over the river north of Chilliwack Mountain, eastbound for Kamloops, climbing 4,500 feet. Two mass traffic, Cessna 172, Golf Victor, Oscar Tango. A uh, little correction or a little thing I'd like you to say is where you are, where you're going. 2,500 climbing. 4,500. Gotcha. Because what you said could be, could be interpreted as 4,500 climbing. Still climbing right, 4,500, gotcha. right? Okay. Oh, what do you see? Can't tell. I thought something looked suspiciously bright white in this cloud right here in front of us, but... Yeah. Oh, he's far. Let's go that way. Right as oh, you yeah, said that cloud, I was like, I saw him and he looked bigger than he was. He's okay. way out there. Oh, helicopter to the left. Oh, oh got it. Halfway up the mountain. Oh. There's an airplane right there. I saw a plane out in front of us again somewhere. Yeah, I saw him as well. I lost it though. I got him again. Halfway up the mountain. Uh, 11 30. 12. Halfway up. Oh, got him here. Well, it's more chaotic, but this isn't even chaotic. Yeah. Alright, throw your hood on. Thank you. I have control. You have controls. Oh, you were tripped odd. Yeah, I was working on that. Oh, that's gorgeous. I'm sorry. Look left. Oh, wow. Have camera. you been to Harrison much? Camera. I, I don't know if I've ever been to Harrison. What? Yeah. Alright, this map just became useless to us. To you. <laughs> Oh my god, let me hear you fly. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't have a foldable thumb. I need to teach you how to, how to fold a, a chart. How are you feeling? Not too bad. A little fatigued? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I can definitely guarantee you must be. Altitude. Ah, oh, yeah, 5-5. Five, five. We have 1.4 hood on the way down, right? Sorry? We have 1.4 hood on the way down? Yeah. Okay, so 1.1. 1.1. 1.3, 16... The magic number is 1649. Okay, cool. So an hour from now. Yeah. How about this? Better flight timer. Maybe it'll start. <laughs> oh, whatever. I mean, it does start after like three minutes or so. Oh, I guess, yeah. Alright, let's do another on route. Should we try to climb above it? I mean, it's not a terrible idea. Yeah. Conditions should be good in Kamloops, right? So... Uh, they're calling scattered. Which is legal. So why don't we do an on-route climb? Okay. Do a uh, full power, right? So yep. full power. Up to a... Uh, we'll start with sub-5. Sub-5 rudder. Now we're going to have to navigate along our route without having perfect visual reference to the ground. Right. So, how are we going to do that? Uh, I suppose technology is not the correct answer. It is. It is? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Not that technology, though. That crap. This technology. Which technology? Oh, okay. <laughs> I should have pointed out a chart. That would be... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you would have been done. <laughs> I would have left the plane immediately. <laughs> so how can we use our GPS to navigate away from home? Um, well, we know we kind of have to go essentially north. I would imagine that uh, there's some sort of, I can't believe it's not VOR kind of set up in there that uh, could be used for that. Oh, why don't we go direct to Hope? So it's telling you to make a turn. What does the OBS button do? Oh, um, that activates that. Oh, yeah, yeah, so why don't we click OBS? And why don't we set our heading we're looking for? So, north, true north is just like this. Yeah. So let's go 15 degrees less of north. All right, and let's intercept that. Okay. So what heading are we turning to? Uh, we're going to start with uh, the 300 go from there. Okay. I like how much this cleared out. Yeah. I bet we could make it two cam loops. Feeling daredevilish? Why go straight back? Yeah. We could try it. 7,500 feet. No, we'll need 9.5. 9.5? Do you want to climb 9.5 and see if we can do it then? Oh, we can try it. Alright, and how are we looking on our route here, so far? Uh, on that looks pretty good. Oh, that, uh... Not bad. Could be worse. We're a half mile off course. Except for that. Uh... Uh... We're gonna stick on our course here. I, yeah, there's too many convective clouds up there. That won't work. We'll have okay. to go this way. Okay. You can see them now. Alright, now that you leveled off, scan everything else with your radio scan. Make sure we're not messing anything else up. Helsing's holding, heading's holding. We're lean. Nope, Helsing's not holding anymore. There you are. Remember, take a glance at both of those. Right. Want to try that? That should be Merritt in there. No, we have a go. Do you see the mountain for Merritt? Pacific Radio Hope, Cessna 172, Gulf Victor, Oscar, Tango. Calling radio again. Pacific Radio, Gulf Victor, Oscar, Tango, just looking to amend our flight plan. Victor, Oscar, Tango, Roger, go ahead. Victor, Oscar, Tango is currently over Spasm. Uh, we're going to turn direct to Merritt and continue from Merritt direct to Kamloops. Uh, no change in flight time. Check your intentions. See, uh, the altimeter 2974, Kamloops 2968. Victor, Oscar Tango, check. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Alright, so let's uh, go direct to Merritt. Well, I'm glad we made this work. Yeah, this is sweet. This is awesome. Glad you had fun. Yeah. Not the instrument work. You just need to deal with uh, one more point eight, which will be a lot of night suffering. <laughs> not your flap stopped working. Not your landing lights not working. <laughs> a better attitude. I was kind of nose up, but I'm trying to hold her altitude. Fair enough. Trick for you: leave some power in when you level off. Right. For a few seconds. Get the plane to accelerate. Like you're slowly building the airspeed, which is transferring you, but it's still kind of, kind of not quite there. Right. Look off your right shoulder. Woo! You can take some photos if you'd like. <laughs> These <laughs> are the cool ones. I got the airplane. Oh, look at your left. Oh my god. Okay, I like clouds like that. Looks like we literally just left out of a storm or something like that. Well, it's <laughs> That's probably Kamloops, isn't it? The cloud? Um. Potentially. Potentially. Also looks like Merritt's rainy. Also looks like that's rainy, so I think we made a good decision. Yeah. Hi, it's Paul from the future. I should explain what's going on with this weather. So we were down here over this place called Spuzzum, so Riley called Pacific Radio and said, okay, we're going to fly direct to Mare, we're going to cut that corner, and then we're going to fly direct to Kamloops, no big deal. 
The problem is there's this big batch of cloud and rain and grossness coming down out of Kamloops to meet us. So to avoid it, what we kind of had to do is go way out east over here near a place called Douglas Lake. And then we were able to go north from there. Uh, now, unfortunately, I'm not able to show you what that storm looked like because this is also the point where my front facing camera died. Um, but here's a picture that I took uh, when we got back to Kamloops looking back south uh, to show you the big storm thingy that we missed. Uh, so yeah, that's basically what was going on. We had a big storm to try and get around. So back to the video now where there's only a face cam. Here we go. Oh. So, I'm gonna have to look at the weather. Pacific Radio Kamloops, Golf Vector Oscar Tango Radio Check. Golf Indy Oscar Tango Pacific Radio. And uh, Golf Victor Oscar Tango, we're uh, just over Merritt, and there looks to be some cells north of Merritt. Do you have any uh, radar information on them? Yeah, we don't have radar information, but satellite definitely shows some cells uh, in the vicinity of Merritt and northward towards Kamloops. They're all basically moving from north to south right now. Victor Oscar Tango, check. We're. Uh, Looking for the best way around them, should we move around the east or the west uh, to get into Kamloops there? It's not a whole lot of difference, really. It looks a little bit more open um, east to the east. Uh, it's a bit more cloud cover right. in general to the west. Um, yeah, I'd probably say you're closer to some scattered conditions uh, east of your position. Victor, ask your tango check uh, remarks. I appreciate your help. We'll uh, head around the east of them. West looks a little gross. Okay, roger that. Thank you. All right, let's turn uh, 090, please. Roger. Uh, a little bit quicker. <laughs> Ready for a good, uh, good cat nap? <laughs> Hungry. I might, 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 need a, might need to get a donut. A donut? Oh, um... I swear I just saw snow. But now I did What the heck? Oh no, it did snow. Momentarily. Yeah, there's snow on the tire. Like I swear oh, to yeah, God. Oh yeah, there I is too. Yeah, I, <laughs> I swear it. to god I just saw snow. Snow is okay. The good news is if we get stuck up here long enough, I'll get my night time too. <laughs> no. <laughs> There is that. <laughs> there is that. Uh, what's best endurance? <laughs> and let's go 6-5, and then I can see Kamloops from here. We can beeline it. Okay. Or uh, 10 o'clock. So let's start a very gentle left bank. <laughs> Alright, I feel better now. Cool. I was getting a little concerned at how far east we had to go. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Huh? I was wondering about that. Well, yeah, we're almost at Douglas Lake. Just to avoid the... Oh, best part, that cell, it kind of just kept pushing us south. I can see Merritt perfectly. I have control if you want to take the hood off. You have the controls. Oh. How you doing? Good, I can see. Sweet mother of God, look at that stuff. Holy cow. You feel better that you're under the hood? Uh, kind of. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I I kind of saw how dark it was when I looked the other day, but like I didn't realize how big that cell was. I'm gonna be honest. I've I think I've called FIS or FSS on route for weather maybe once, <laughs> and this was the only other time because as we were coming up to it, I'm like, I don't know, like left <laughs> left looked like see that there? Yeah, that's what it looked like. Right, the whole way. Right, and I was like, I don't think we can get around that. And I was like, hey, how is it to the east? And he's like, better. I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool. east it is. Yep, 100%. Kamloops Radio, Cessna 172, Golf Victor Oscar Tango. Cessna 172, Golf Victor Oscar Tango, Kamloops Radio. Kamloops Radio is about 10 miles south of the aerodrome at 6,400 feet inbound, full stop. Clock ID, runway 27, wind 260 at 14, dusting 21, altimeter 29 or 70, roger ID. Roger, I will come in... Left base. Left base for 27. Roger, runway 27. 
entering the zone. Hamlet's Radio Golf Big Oscar Tango entering the zone from the southeast, sending through 3,800 feet. Victor Oscar Tango, Roger. What were the winds again? 270 at 16, gusting 21. Yeah, that's something really cool. Okay, so let's do uh, 20 flaps. I'm yeah. thinking, hey? Yeah. yeah. Good. You can land 30, it's fine. Crosswind factor, definitely 20. Right. Okay, your control authority is terrible as you go slower. Right. So the wind is from that side, going this way, so... Is it? That wing down. Well, I kind of feel like I'm crabbing it like this way. Maybe. Let's see, let's check the windsock down though. That's what matters. Yeah, you, good luck. <laughs> I will be impressed if you can tell me where the wind's from at this distance. I was trying to see where the windsock even was. I think I can see where it is. I can barely see it when I'm a thousand feet above the airport, not a three mile <laughs> final. Two miles. This is over 10,000 feet away. Alright, so we got left crosswind. Oh, bird. So let's get it straight now. Get it straight now, right rudder. Right rudder. Right rudder. That's oh, straight. Okay. I'll hold it there. Okay. Got it. Pull the power, look down the runway. You've got it. Happy feet, happy feet. Happy feet, happy hands. You're a little high, let it let it balloon down. Be ready with a bit of power maybe. Roll it over, roll it over. You're a little high. Nice. Nice. Take. Hi, Paul from the future again. So this ends our two-part series of our trip down to Pitt Meadows and back. Big ol' thanks to Riley for taking me down there, and thanks to you for watching, and next time on Paul Goes Flying, uh, a video of some sort, probably. Uh, yeah. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a month. Okay, bye. Ha, huh, here's a funny story. So... I went to, I went fishing with my girlfriend and her sister's boyfriend. Yep. She my girlfriend just tagged along with us. And I was doing like fly fishing, right? So you like you bring it back really quick and then you let it out. Okay. And I'm like I set it and I was like, ah, oh, there's nothing there. And I think right when I pulled back, a fish bit. <laughs> and you pulled the skeleton out of it. <laughs> this thing, like totally expecting like just a nice cast back. I yank, it feels firm, but I like, I'm already, like, committed. Right. This fish burst out of the water at, like, mock chicken <laughs> flies, flies across the bow of the boat and then smacks into the water behind us. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I got a fish! <laughs> this tiny, tiny fish. Like, I feel, ab like, couldn't have been like a half pound. <laughs> so I, one, if he even bit, I wouldn't have felt it. Right. But I think it was like, I basically set the hook as he was biting. Right. <laughs> oh, good. It was so funny. <laughs>